What's up, Ramsey Nation? Welcome to this video where we are going to be watching Gordon Ramsey is served awful seafood. Now, before this video gets started, be sure to hit that like button if you like this video. Hit that thumbs down dislike button if you just hate awful seafood. Just, just hit it. Hit that subscribe button and then ring that bell. That way you get notified every time a video goes live, which we post videos every weekday at 9 a.m. Eastern time. And then if you're into this sort of thing, be sure to go over to my subscribe star and check out those videos. Uh, check out the subscribe star there and, and the tiers and, and all that stuff. And I'm still kind of figuring out what's going on. Um, but... Uh, yeah, just go check it out if you want to. No big deal there. And then if you are against watching videos on YouTube or wanting to transition to a different platform, I am also uploading these videos to Rumble. So there you go. Another option, a place to watch these videos if you're into that sort of thing. You know, it's up to you. So with that, let's get right into this video. Okay, so I think this episode is from the American version of Kitchen Nightmares once again. Um, four by three, the the whole thing, the whole thing that we've been seeing this whole time, this whole time with all these American uh, versions of Kitchen Nightmares recently. I mean, we had that one earlier on that got blocked. If you want to watch that one, you can um, check it out. Um, if you use a VPN, maybe you can go to Mexico and watch it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, let's see what this video uh, has in store for us. I'm wrong. It was not in 4x3. It's not in four by three, but uh, seafood crepes. This is a perfect. This is a perfect pausing point. I mean, we're one. We're two seconds in. Two seconds in. This is a great pause. What were you smoking when you thought of this? I mean, this looks. Th those aren't crepes. Those are tortilla shells. Those are tortilla shells that you're trying to pass off as crepes, with boogers on it i mean that looks like that looks like someone just sneezed on these tortilla shells with seafood in it there's crab in there there's lobster and some shrimp in there also crab lobster and shrimp why why are you doing that combo that doesn't make any sense thank you no problem nasty ay, ay, ay. chef ramsey seems to have a, yeah that's nasty uh, to take his food apart before he eats it so a habit of taking his food apart yes because he wants to know why you're covering up this seafood with the this these nasty tortillas and then calling it a crepe and then sneezing on it like that's why he's taking it apart and he wants to also make sure that you're not going to poison him with uncooked fish oh well, i'm looking forward to hearing what he has to say yeah this guy is like totally arrogant yeah yeah because it was all frozen this lady I, if i remember right like the, both of these people admit that they're stressed and and depressed later on the prawns are way overcooked yup and the crab meat it's plastic it's imitation crab imitation Why are you using imitation crab? Real crab isn't really that big of a deal, and I bet you're paying real crab prices for it, you know, when you serve it. Like, dang. Yeah, if you told me it was imitation crab meat, I wouldn't have ordered it. Yeah. Oh, God help me. Well, that was a disaster. Seafood crepe. Yeah. That's seafood crap. Yeah. This is the worst thing <laughs> yeah. I'm sure. The, like uh, again, I don't. What were you thinking with that? That it's it's just totally out of your wheelhouse. And if that was the chef that came up with that, that chef needs to get canned. And if it's the owner that came up with it, the chef should say no. I'm not gonna make it. Oh dear. 
Ooh, he hates it when he has to wait, especially when he knows that it's bad. I'm waiting on my... Oh, it's this episode, yeah. So this girl, she really doesn't want to be a cook, and in, in this open kitchen concept here is terrible. Like, if your food is really good, then this concept's great when there's a whole bunch of stuff in the kitchen happening, but this, when you have, like, two, like depressed chefs and one that really doesn't want to be there it's not a good recipe which is raw so why am i waiting so long there's the steak and this is the oil thank you no problem nothing like waiting to cook your own meat is there yeah time for a little prayer yeah, because that meat looks like it's bad. Uh, comes out looking like dog food. Yeah, this low quality. <laughs> that was rancid, pointless, tasteless, a complete utter joke. Yeah, that's so stupid. Why would you deep fry the filet mignon? Yeah, well, and then also, like, again, it looked like it had been sitting in the refrigerator for like a couple days. Days. I mean, like the discoloration was not appetizing at all. One of the country's best steaks, deep fried. Are they stupid? Oh no. Yeah, they are. Yeah. See, look, she. Part of this might be for show. Part of it might be real. But like. I think she's really having a nervous breakdown because she's realizing the reality of the situation for the first time in a long time. She's been in, in La La Land. She's been in, you know, in this haze. You know, she, she knows that she's stressed. She knows that she's depressed, but she doesn't know. She's not willing to admit the reality of the situation to herself and this this happening to her is finally letting it all kind of put the pieces together <laughs> and it's not good it's not pretty but you know you got to go through that you got to go through that to know you know if you need to get out before you dig yourself into a bigger bigger hole i wanted him to be happy with us but i kind of knew deep down inside that there has to be something wrong with the restaurant Otherwise, bingo you knew here. it oh my god what is this thing? you knew it you should always first assume that it's the food then get it confirmed that it is the food or not the food if it's not the food then it's the decor it's the staff it's you know everything but the food but typically it's Always the food first. Fiesta. Fiesta. No, she's right. After an underwhelming. So there is a place that I used to go to in the uh, in a town that I worked at called the Handlebar, and they had, um, and it was not this place. They were known for their tacos. And I gotta be honest with you, like, everybody just, like, talked about these tacos. Oh, these tacos, these tacos, they're so good, these tacos. And so finally, since it was an actual bar, I when I turned 21, I was able to go. My work took me. And I, I gotta tell you, I mean... Not good tacos. <laughs> not good tacos. I mean, not even, I like, not even, they just, they're, I mean, they're, they were not good. I, I didn't understand it. But, so this, <laughs> this place being called the Handlebar reminds me of that. Um, I mean, I, maybe they would be good if I was a little bit buzzed, a little bit drunk, but like having them for lunch, I mean, you know, they weren't terrible, right? Okay. Let's be honest here. They weren't terrible, but they weren't like, oh my God, you got to go out of your way for these tacos. Like everybody kept on saying, it's like, no, it's just like a regular run of the mill bar taco to me. Whelming first meal. Okay. Pull together. Gordon realizes that. And they deep fried the shells, but then they didn't deep fry them enough. It was a weird, it was weird. 
the owners and the chef are oblivious to the restaurant's real problems. What's wrong with the business? It's this room, as you see, and we can't fill 18 tables on a Friday night. Okay, that's a symptom of <laughs> of what's really wrong. See, that's the problem. People people look at these symptoms, you know, oh, we can't fill 18 tables on a Friday night, you know, and they think that that's what's wrong, not filling tables. No, that's a symptom of what in what is really wrong with the restaurant, which is all, most times going to be the food. That's the problem. No. The problem here is the food. Boom, baby. The food's bad, Bill. I never really had complaints about the food, so that was never really an area of con I never really had complaints about the food, so that was never really an area of concern. Bull. Bull. I bet you had food returned all the time. I bet you had people complaining about the food all the time. I bet you had... I don't, I don't know what era this is, but I'm sure Yelp... Uh, exists or some sort of review thing exists critic newspaper what have you i bet they complained about the food there and then you just blew it off you just blew it off 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 and then till you never believed that it was the food and it's always been the food concerned to me when the fondue arrived i mean that's just a joke i don't enjoy the fondue either but you're the chef aren't you you're the one that's you know you're you're running it as the yeah, so this is another issue that happens too. So you have owners that come in and believe that they get to dictate and, and boss around the chef, but it's like, well, okay, you hired this person to make the food. You hired this person to run the kitchen. You know, they either have to have full dominion over the menu, over the food, over the ordering, over the kitchen staff, or they're not the chef, you know? Then, then you, the owner, are the chef, and then this is just your hired lackey, you know, and that's where it causes problems. If you have, if you tell someone that they're a chef, that means certain things. I mean, chef means boss. And so if you are called the chef, then you should be the boss of setting the menu, who's in the kitchen, and where and when you order things. And if you're not doing those things, you're not a chef. You're just hired help. Head chef, right? That, that's the intent. So change it. I don't know what to do about it. Have you lost your passion? I never had a passion to begin with. Yep, see then, <laughs> and that's another thing. You know, the, like, we, like I was saying earlier about her, you know, if you don't have a passion to be a chef, then you're not going to correct these issues when the owner starts making ridiculous suggestions and claims and all that jazz. Like, it's just not going to work out. You got to have a passionate chef in there or else you're just on the train to the handlebar situation. <laughs> I, I don't want to be a chef. I was really I like how they act like they they don't know this. It's like I'm sure she's said this like a couple dozen times to them like in the heat of moments and stuff and they're just like, "Ah, eh, whatever, you know, they don't she doesn't know what she's talking about, you know, that sort of thing." And uh it's just like, "Come on, people. Come on." The shock that that's the way she felt. So you're not a chef? No. I had applications for the job here as a chef when she approached me and said, would you give me the opportunity? I mean, you don't ask for that opportunity if you don't care what you're doing. That's not necessarily true. So if you already work at a place, sometimes you just want more money and you see this as a, you know, more money or you don't like the position that you in, you're in. And so this is a, you know, sidestep into a different position that might be fun. And then when you get into the position, you realize, oh, it's not for me, but, you know, I'm here. Might as well make the best of it. <laughs> you know, it, ha it happens all the time. Why did you take the job, Melissa, if you're not a chef? The other guy was going out that was here. Okay. Um... Yeah, I mean. I didn't think our situation was as bad as I'm finding out. And that's the problem. That's the problem with all 
of these, I didn't think the situation was as bad as I am finding out. But the thing is, is like when they go back and look at things, they can realize that, you know, they knew, they knew the, you know, the signs were there. The signs are always there. You know, you should have you know i i don't have a problem with them picking her as the chef in, in in that moment right like oh this you know the opportunity comes up she says she wants it okay fine let's we'll put you in that position and then i mean like after six months if she's not really pulling her weight which she probably wasn't you know just be like hey duh, we're gonna have to replace you here like that's just you know how things are right you know but you know, they just kept her around and because, you know, they were in denial and they, you know, I, they didn't think anything was wrong because I, I don't know. I never had any food complaints and blah, blah, blah. It's like, eh, you should, yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. You know, so which then leads to the stress and the depression and the breakdown and the dead and the this or that and then telling gordon ramsay the problem with the restaurant is that you can't fill 18 seats on a friday night when that's just a symptom like that's just that's just how that road goes <laughs> so all right that's it for this video and the seafood crepes be sure to hit that like button if you like this video. Hit that dislike button if you dislike awful seafood. Hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to be sure you get notified every time our videos go live. And then head over to subscribe to Star. Check that out. If you're into that sort of thing, great. If not, no big deal. And then, again... We're uploading videos to Rumble now as well as YouTube. That way, if you are tired of YouTube or moving away from YouTube, you don't have to miss out on the Ramsey Reaction content train. So with that, thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next video.